Welcome to our channel, ladies and gentlemen. A happy 60th Jamhuri Day. We take this opportunity to celebrate and remember those who fought and paid with their blood to give us the freedom that we are enjoying today. Our founding fathers, our heroes, the Mau Mau, and every person who took part to ensure that we have our freedom today. It is the 6th Jamhuri Day. This is the second Jamhuri that William Ruto is presiding over. And he was learning from the first one because the first Jamhuri celebration was a fiasco, if you ask me. Kenyans boycotted that event. The pictures were full of empty chairs. And this event was coming against a backdrop of unpopularity of this government, courtesy of the high cost of living. And they did not want to repeat the same mistake that they did in the first Jamhuri celebration. They knew very well that there was a possibility that Kenyans would boycott this event because someone was asking me, a channel, is there anything to smile about? And my answer is yes and no. No, because things are tough, courtesy of the very unpopular policies of this government. But yes, because we are celebrating, not the Kenya Kwanzaa government, but our heroes who fought the, 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 the Wazungu with their, their, their handling crude weapons and defeated the colonial masters. That is the only reason why I celebrate today. So what did the Kenya Kwanzaa do to ensure that they were not going to be ashamed again? Because if there is something that this government fears, is the shame. Because they know very well where we were before they took over power. The journey they have worked with us for the whole year they've been with us, and where we are today, things continue to deteriorate economically, politically, socially, name it. So the government decided to plant some Uda supporters, people who are dressed in green t-shirts, others were dressed in yellow t-shirts, they were given caps, they were given some small flags, and I want you to watch this video because they were placed strategically at the entrance of Huru Gardens so that as the president enters, immediately he reaches that gate, they were given one role to shout in jubilation as they, 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 they fly all the, the flags and they shouted Ruto, Ruto, Ruto. To convince everyone who is watching, to convince the other dignitaries, because we had invited some guests, guests, uh, Alia San Mwini, the, the, the first uh, deputy, I think, prime minister of Uganda. We had a host of leaders who came to grace this occasion, and the president and his team did not want to be ashamed. They wanted to show the, 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 the guests that William Ruto is still very popular amidst the reports that Kenyans are rebelling against the Kenya Kwanzaa regime.
Now, if you watch the videos very carefully, you notice that those were young people, vijana too, and it seemed like the, 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 the girls or ladies were so many because their sound really over, overread the sounds of, 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 of the men who were there as they sang Ruto, Ruto, Ruto. Now, if you ask me, I'll tell you that there is a sense of insecurity in this government. You know, when our founding fathers formed the government, we have been informed that they wanted to fight about three things. Illiteracy, then uh, poverty, and is it insecurity? Ujinga, umaskini, and all that. But when you look back 60 years down the line, you will realize that we are still struggling with the four aspects of life that they wanted to talk about. If you look at insecurity, we are still bedeviled by insecurity in the, the northern parts of our country where bandits are taking over. They would interfere with our education. I remember even as we were taking exams, there were fears that they would interfere with us. Then we have Al-Shabaab. Many a times we have seen some of our, 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 our the, the, the military planes, the choppers, getting wrecked in a way that we don't understand. And we all know the situation of the insecurity in the country today. This is happening even as the Kenyan government is planning to ferry a thousand policemen to Haiti against the chagrin and complaint of many experts that this is not the time. So insecurity is still a challenge with us because the government does not have a plan. You talk of poverty. Kenya is, the, the Kenyan government is still being controlled by excessive corruption, excessive wastage. We have deals that cannot be explained. You could talk of oil deal, you talk of petroleum deal, Everywhere we go, you realize that there's a lot of corruption and wastage. And the people, the independent institutions that have been charged with the responsibility of trying to expose some of these things are being interfered with. You remember Margaret Nyakango, the control of budget, when she recently, you know, told of the Kenya Kwanza government that the taxes that were increasing, you know, is driving our our investors away and they say that when we take uh, you know you know when we increase taxes we need to use it properly she would tell them off that the laws that we are taking must be used properly so that when you take a loan you can pinpoint that this is what has been done with it and you can see they are already taking her to court so these kind of things are, are making kenyans to be disappointed that is why the government is unpopular when you ask me and this is the reason why this government knew very well that they, as they were approaching this event, the whole of the Kenya Kwanza team was very unpopular and I believe it's still very unpopular. And those are not my words. Recently, it was reported that uh, in one of the Kenya Kwanza parliamentary group meeting, a PG meeting that was held in State House to review what is going on in the country, the Kenya Kwanza member of members of parliament confronted William Ruto and they told William Ruto that they are becoming unpopular because of the high cost of living. They campaigned on a platform to ensure that the cost of living reduces, but it has become worse. And William Ruto gave them one answer, that you don't need to be popular all the times. You need to be popular at the right time. In other words, many experts believe that William Ruto believes that you can make life become very difficult. For four years that in the last year or in the penultimate year when we are approaching uh, maybe 2027 elections maybe to let's say 2026 then you reduce everything and because kenyans have got this penchant of forgetting their mysteries and predicaments they will always forgive this government and william Ruto will walk all around telling them that i have heard your cry i have heard your plea and now i have reduced all the taxes and we have reduced taking loans and Kenyans will still vote this government because we forget 
very fast. Illiteracy. Recently, we were treated to a very heavy and a very sad dosia from the opposition when we were told that the government has decided to let corruption get into the most sensitive aspect of our lives, education. And we, uh, we were told that due to corruption, the Kenyan government took away the contract from the British government that used to print our exams. And it was given to some Indian company in Mombasa Road, and you know what happened, and this is the mess that we are in today. We have some children still in court. They got marks and points that they never thought they could get, and their rot has gotten into education center. So as we try to fight poverty, insecurity, and illiteracy, we are not going to achieve it because we are led by a president who calls himself a doctor. He's got masters. But we are not giving our children an environment that will allow them to get quality education. And so, ladies and gentlemen, the government knew very well that they were approaching this event when they are very unpopular. Kenyans are vexed with them. And they decided to sugarcoat it by giving some group, you know, money. And they were dressed in those UDA t-shirts, yellow, in those green t-shirts. And throughout the speeches, those were the people who were shouting on top of their voices. But you see, let me tell you something. This will not change anything. This is a one-day event. As people shall break from the Jamburi celebration, they will go back to their homes. People are approaching Christmas festivities and I know the president will take that opportunity to wish Kenyans a happy you know Christmas a happy new year prosperous new year but then schools will open and that is when we will be faced with the reality on the ground the cost of living is high the cost of education there is no food in fact last uh, term or last year most schools closed very early I remember when we were in school we could uh, complete our exam and we wait for even two, three, four days, or even a week before we, we come home. But this time around, people were closing and, you know, students and people were being sent home very, very early and very fast because there is no money in schools, there is no food and all this. So ladies and gentlemen, the government of the day must understand that we cannot choreograph all these things. You cannot plant people to start, you know, shouting ruto 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 and you want to convince yes you can convince uh, you know the, the the other visitors that our president is popular but the government knows itself they are becoming very unpopular by the day in fact they have left this to propaganda they continue to blame Uhuru regime for the constant blackouts and you wonder and I, today i remember one of the lawyers was, was, was making a joke that Uhuru should return water because the government will, stu, will soon you know, accuse Uhuru Kenyatta of taking away water or, or rains and that is why we have blackouts. They continue in this blame game, something that is very pathetic and very sad. The high taxes continue to drain Kenyans in, uh, and, and with corruption and a lot of wastage in the country. If the government is not very careful, this is gonna be a one-term president and i can assure you that apart from the fact that we are celebrating the lives of our forefathers our founding fathers the lives of our heroes who fought the colonial masters there's nothing more to smile about and that is a fact the bloggers the uda bloggers can say whatever they want but this is a fact and the kenyans know it so our visitors came, and I know from the pictures that they have, they might think that our president is popular, but I know they must have seen the way they were placed at the gate, and they can add one, two things, and they will know that this was a scam. I don't know what you think, but that's